for joining me. I'm Scott, and I've got a 1997 Fender Roadhouse Strat that's in for some body work. It was uh, getting unloaded for a gig when the latches of the case gave and uh, it flung open and the guitar fell about eight feet to the concrete. And that's what happens. So we're going to be doing a whole lot of body work today. It's going to seem like you're in watching auto body repair because I'm going to whip out the Bondo and all that kind of stuff and hopefully this goes well and I get it back to him in time for the uh, Luke Combs Tour 2023. Let's zoom in. Take a look. Sure looks like it's been uh, repainted a few times because I see like silver and some other weird things going on under there. Let me turn off these lights and see how it looks. Yeah. Boy, I tell you, a ding like this really is hard to get smooth again. I'm just chipping away at some of those little mountains. It was like there's some little valleys and there were some little mountains sticking up. It was all rough. Next, I insert the gray epoxy putty from the Harper Freight store. Yeah, there's the gray epoxy putty. I have another job going on right now where I'm going to be using some uh, epoxy putty on a wood grain, and then I ordered some new stuff. It's it's a pine color. Everybody likes pine color. Okay, so for the small ding on the treble side of the guitar, I'm using thick or gel super glue. It's called Loctite Gel Control Super Glue. Now, with a little help from some accelerator and some uh, peel and stick 120 grit tape, I'm going to level sand those little mountains right off. And this is something I learned from Ian Davlin. Always want to give a shout out to Ian Hates Guitars. Ian with hatred, some say. So the art of level sanding a guitar is kind of like this. You want to get in the mind frame of a sculptor. Sculpting granite. It takes a long time. You start off with chisels, then you work your way to fine sandpapers and polishes. You can't mess up along the way at all or you have to start over with a fresh piece. Well anyways, after the 120, I go up to 220, and I'm kind of just getting it ready for some, you know, keep in mind I'm going up to 3,000 grit before I even, you know, get out the compounds. So the 120 and the 220, we're just prepping it, we're getting it ready for some of the glue boost, fill and finish thin. And I just learned this recently, but um, you can wipe it on. After I sand, I wipe to clean the area. I wipe it with a naphtha and a paper towel. Just want to make sure that uh, there's no dust. And then this, I want to put on about nine coats of this uh, glue boost fill and finish thin with paper towels. I'm going to go through a, about, you know, eight or nine paper towels and two or three drops of the fill and finish on each application. You can't reuse them because I'm using the accelerator in between. After nine coats and some accelerator, you gotta wait an hour and I start wet sanding with 600 grit sandpaper. 
and the Murphy's oil soap. Sometimes I spray the glue boost onto a paper towel and kind of rub it over the area. Then I wipe, then I wait, then I accelerate. Total of nine coats. And then I wet sand again. 600 through 1500. And then I get ready for some color. I'm going to be mixing up some black. And we're just going to be brushing it on. Just wearing a cotton respirator. Get some ventilation going in the room. Get the fan running. more wet sanding something to keep in mind with this uh, sanding is that each time we go up a grit we're trying to take out the scratches from the previous lower grit so if we ever go back from 600 back down to 400 we got to do the 600 grand again before we can do the 800. Then we do the 1,000, the 1,200, 1,500, 2,000. After 2,000, I like to use the Trizact. It's a 3,200 grit, and I wet sand with that. Clean the area and move on to compounds. But before the color coat, I'm just trying to get up to 2,000. This is the Mix All Black. It's kind of a gray black. It's not jet black. So I dropped in a little of that and I add a little bit of India ink. I want it somewhere in between gray black and jet black. I'm kind of guessing, and in hindsight, I should have gone 50-50. 50, 50. 50 mix all 50 ink. That would have that would have got me a better match, because my uh, my my repair ended up being a little gray. Also, I want to mention that uh, after I do the color coat, that I did another nine coats of the fill and finish thin before I wet sand. I lost some of the footage on the wet sanding and polishing, but right here I'm dropping in the black with a brush and I did two kind of thick coats. If I were to do it over again, I would have mixed more shellac into the cup and brushed on like four or five coats with about 15, 20 minutes in between each coat because these two thick coats took 20 hours to dry. I had to wait and do the nine coats of fill and finish thin over top of it. I had to wait that till the next day. Ready to do some wet sanding. I've got wet sandpaper here, um, foam blocks of various sizes, Murphy's oil soap. I like to wear a towel over my shoulder. That way I can wipe it down as needed. And I like, I like to start with 600 grit. I don't know if this smallest pad is going to be the best one, but I'm just going to see how it looks. And I can lubricate with the Murphys. One drop will do. Soapy. The 600 grit is just to get the, it's just for leveling. No polishing, just leveling. Oop. Come wait. 
keep it. We'll see how we're coming along. Bring you in from this angle so you can see all that, that texture. Okay, I lost a lot of footage, sanding footage, and I lost the footage of the coarse compound. Right here, this is the medium compound. It's kind of a white color. The coarse is a, oh, I guess I'd call it a brown color. So my first two polishing coats or polishing applications are color tone coarse and medium and that's after my 3200 grit get grit trizac i apply the color tone polishing compounds with a foam pad all that's available from stew mac and i'm keeping the volume kind of low on the video because i know that the power drill kind of reminds people going to the dentist and that's just not a good experience for everybody I just love to go to the dentist to get my teeth ground down to little nubs, but I'm just kind of weird like that. I'm thinking about getting a root canal. I thought that would be fun. didn't even mention but you want to make sure you use a different pad for each compound you know I've got one for coarse medium polish here's a new one I got about a hundred dollars worth of pads right here I even make sure that I don't put the wrong lid on I label each lid you know M for medium also you know I bag eat these to keep them from getting crispy but um, just label everything, you know, if you're doing this kind of stuff. This is McGuire's ultimate compound to keep your Corvette nice and shiny. You got to keep your Corvette looking good. Now it's time for ultimate polish. Always put it on the pad, not on the project. And I can't emphasize enough how you just can't skip a step when it comes to a polyester finish. 100s of dollars of polishing and sand. Lastly, I do a little wax and a little guitar polish. And if you really want to go crazy, you can repeat this step. 12 times, man. However much wax you want to build up into all those little scratches and how shiny do you want to get this whole thing, I don't know, but I'm just going to do one coat for now. Maybe I'll put some strings on it, I don't know. I'd like to play it for you guys. Since it's going to be hitting the road and going on tour, you guys might see this on the road, the Luke Combs. And uh, just remember the story when you see it. That his uh, good old buddy from Tupelo, or actually it's Boonville, Mississippi, Dustin. They're both named Dustin. And uh, the Dustin that's hitting the road with Luke Combs always wanted this guitar. And his friend Dustin finally decided to give it to him. And um, before he did, he wanted to get it all shined up, fixed up. Get rid of that big ugly ding for his friend. And I can, can just give it to him. So here's a recap of everything. We got all the wet sandpaper, Murphy's oil soap, the Trizac, the polishing pads, the foam. I use a hockey puck to keep everything inside the water. I got the, the compounds, the, the pads, coarse medium, and then I use the Meguiar's Ultimate. I have a pad for that. I also have one for the polish. I go to the wax and then the guitar polish. So that's a lot of investment in 
and the pads alone are the most expensive thing. Those, those are like 15 bucks per pad. Anyways, I think I'm, I'm thinking about stringing this guitar up and, and uh, doing a sound demo of it. I think I might just do that.